even is the texture of the movement. called polishing the stone, of course, because as if there were a big stone here that you were polishing with the whole system, the whole body. Good. All right, we're going to draw back this time and complete with a settling breath. And this is called integrating breath. This is a uh, very wise and ancient practice, very relevant to us today. So you let the hands flow out to the side, turn your palms up. Elbows don't come up too high. You're going to face the palms in so they flow down the front line of the body on left and right sides, smoothing out, settle, settling out here. Good. And feel, see if you can let go into feeling the whole body breathe, every cell nourished by the breath. And you can do your rhythm. Some of you will like to do this practice a little slower. You'll have greater lung capacity. But this is, a, this is the pattern of this practice. Let's let it settle down and return for just one moment to our standing meditation posture. This is one of the four gestures of dignity that uh, are part of all meditation systems, almost all. Sitting, standing, walking, and moving in this way, and believe it or not, lying down. Just to feel, just to feel that natural settling, that alignment, center circle, center line. Good. Okay, very good. Now, um, if you would, I'd like to guide us in a very short uh, meditation, and you might like to do this seated. So uh, sitting on a chair, on a cushion, however you're comfortable is just fine. Thank you. So in that same quality of integrity, of alignment that we have with that standing meditation form, we also have with our seated meditation. So the body is not rigid at all. It's a alive, awake, uh, vital. Um, but there is structural integrity. There is that energetic central column here and the structure of the spine. So you can just rest your hands. Some of you like to do the formal gesture. I'm just resting my hands on my knees right now for just a moment. Good, we're gonna let that settle. In the traditions of practice, just being in this gesture, sometimes called quiet sitting, is enough. We're not generating thought. We're not trying to plan. If you're present in your planning mind, then relax into your breath. Relax into just the physical sensations through the gateways of the of tactile sense, your eyes, your ears. Just present in a direct and embodied way here with these uh, amazing aspects of our human life. So as we do, we're going to settle for a moment or two and just allow for the practice of what is called uh, natural abdominal breathing. Yes, of course, the mechanism of the breath is here, 
but the sense of the crown of the diaphragm here and relaxing energetically into the field of the hara is quite important. And it may take a moment to soften the space of your eyes. So physically soften that space, relax the jaw, the tongue, the throat, and that central column inside the body settles down more deeply into the field of the hara. And we let the breath just naturally expand. So when you feel this natural abdominal breathing in the space of your abdominal field, you can feel that it naturally expands a little bit with that in-breath and naturally pulses closed with the exhalation. So just take a moment to cultivate that. Good. Stay with it for a moment. As Nado Sensei says, not as an idea, as a direct embodied feeling. You may well notice that there is a quality of calmness that is naturally uh, present as we begin to settle the generative qualities of cognitive mind, which is important, but less important in this moment. <laughs> and settling down. And the uh, field of the heart is present, the field of natural emotions. Again, we're not focusing here. We're letting go into just the waves and the rhythm of the breath. Very good. So now with that, if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes or leave the curtains of your eyes just a little bit open. We'll do a little deeper exploration of the qualities of the breath here in seated gesture of meditation or quiet sitting. So as you're feeling this natural settling and calmness, the qualities of the breath that may be present for you are soft and smooth. Soft and smooth and quiet. of course, easy and natural. And the breath itself has its own depth and natural rhythm. So this is not yogic breathing. This, the breath has a quietness to it. As we bring the kindness of our attention inside, and have cultivated in these first few moments of natural presence. The breath here. Just let that go uh, into the background a little bit and bring the presence of your awareness inside to see if you can feel the interior space really the outline of your body as you're sitting here. So from the inside, in a way, we have the sense of turning on the light inside, actually the physical form, bringing on the light of kind awareness to feel the outlines of our body. And then with the uh, the cultivation of the breath, the natural generation through ease, through underdoing range of motion, natural presence, letting this relaxed intention guide and feel the generative presence of life force moves to the periphery of the outline of your body. And that radiance moves through the outline of your skin into the space just around the form of your body.
good. Now feel the uh, the uh, the alignment, the natural center line alignment through the space of your head, through the space of the heart and lungs field, space of the hara, then this natural earth connection. So as awareness and radiance open out in all directions, the calmness of the gateways of the senses is right here. Soft, smooth in the qualities of the breath. Very good. Now, for just a moment, bring the kindness of your attention once again to what might be present in your field of thought, concern, and even emotion. And with this quality of equanimity that we've developed in this centering practice, even in these brief moments, we allow that to be Uh, almost as if we're sitting by the riverside watching thoughts go by or emotion, those feelings, they arise, they're present, they pass away. And so we're here in this calmness. And it's also a vivid wakefulness here, just here, not hypnosis. So with that present, then the invitation for for a a moment or so, for a minute or two, we're going to sit in relative uh, silence and I'll let go of the instruction, but I want to invite you into witnessing, into deep witnessing. So we have been looking at the objects of awareness, the objects of our consciousness and our sense gateways, our mind, feelings, mood, emotions. And now this deep and transparent witness that is present to all of this movement, has been present ever since the beginning of our lives, present now, present later. Just let go of time to rest for a moment, to rest in this pure, clear witness. The breath relaxes and continues. For just one more minute, we're just going to sit in resting in pure awareness itself. Okay, thank you very much. Pleasure to be with you and have the opportunity to share a little uh, dimensional practice, uh, potentially for the health and well-being of our future, and share a little meditation with you as well. Thank you, Lauren. 
Thank you, Teja. Thank you, Sensei. Teja Bell Sensei, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you again at the end of the session. Wonderful. Yeah, what, a, what an honor to have you with us today and what an honor to be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Moon. Love you too. <laughs> and so everyone will uh, go into a five minute break now. If you would uh, just uh, uh, do whatever you'd like to do. Uh, we're gonna have a five minute break and uh, at four minutes with one minute to go, I will uh, uh, ring the bell so that uh, everybody can get back on, uh, on their positions. So take your time, we're on a break. Oh yeah, did you enjoy that? <laughs> yeah, last last show, you know, before um, the lockdown, and uh, who knows when shows will start up again? You know, live live music, like whatever. I, mean, I hope uh, Rush, whatever's left. Oh, uh, well, actually, was back on the road. I heard that uh, Getty Lee and and. Uh, Joanna, I think you need to get more rest. Just don't put me on meditation. <laughs> <laughs> but yesterday I could stay for the whole class, okay? So I'm, I'm getting stronger.
Welcome back from the break, everyone. Uh, we have uh, uh, Harry Concepcion Sensei, uh, fifth Don from Aikido of San Jose. Harry has a background in a variety of martial arts, but has been doing Aikido now for uh, decades, decades and decades and decades. And so Harry Concepcion <laughs> Sensei, uh, let's see if we can uh, put you on spotlight for everyone. And, uh, okay. and we can see you just the tips of your toes. How's this? That's better if you want to teach us toe, toe techniques. <laughs> and you're on, Harry. Okay. Hi. Thanks for uh, tuning in this afternoon. My name is Harry. And uh, I'm from Aikido of San Jose, and it's a real privilege to be teaching uh, for you this uh, beautiful Saturday afternoon, the very first uh, Osensei revisited um, session for today. Um, also, I'd like to introduce uh, my uh, good friend and colleague, uh, Michael Brown Sensei. You can take a bow. Okay. All right. All right. And he'll be assisting me throughout the uh, session today. So um, since this is O-Sensei Revisited, let's go ahead and bow to O-Sensei. And there he is right here. Hi, onegaishimasu. Okay, um, what, I, what I thought I'd do is uh, today is uh, share with you a little bit of my own um, process or, or daily training method, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, we're living in some rather strange and uncertain times right now because of the uh, pandemic, all right? We haven't, many of us haven't had a chance to train in, in a year. Uh, dojos are closed, uh, businesses are closed, uh, people have lose, lost their jobs, times are tough, okay? But we as Aikidoists, you know, uh, there's one lesson that I've learned from Aikido, it's develop your center, keep your center. And from that center, move forward with optimism, with uh, that positive key that O-sensei often uh, spoke about. So let's, um, let's begin with a little bit of uh, stretching and movement. So let's start by just standing in place right where you are. Just be comf comfortable where you are right now, okay? Here and now, relax your body, be aware of your breath. And just kind of feel Feel the here and now where you are. Right? Then let's start to bring a little energy into this. Let's start to move. Roll your shoulders forward. And when you roll your shoulders forward, relax them. A lot of tension does co collect up here in this part of your body, your neck and shoulders. Just loosen them up like that. You can alternate your shoulders too. And then roll them back. Roll them back, nice and easy. A little more energy. Circle your arms going forward. You can do one after the other like this. Start moving your center, move your body. And then roll your arms back. Circle your arms back. Now let's stand in a wider stance. Bend your knees, lower your center a little bit. Feel the ground beneath your feet. There's that centered, relaxed feeling. Kind of open your hips from side to side. Your hips are like um, ball bearings, okay? And you want that rotation, full rotation. Open up. And now let's start to move a little bit. You can do a little bit of a two-step if you like. Why not? Let's do two steps. Flow with that energy. There's energy swirling around you. Join it, become one with it. When you do your two steps, it's whole body, okay? Your, your movement, your, your power comes from your center, from your hips. 
So you start with your hips and it continues. One aspect that's very important about doing your two steps is that your hips open. It opens, see that? I lock my hips, very strong looking, okay? But it, you can't move very much or it's, it's harder to, uh, to move and respond with a locked stance like that. So open up, low. Hips open. When your hips are open like this, you can move. In whatever technique that we're doing, okay? So continue moving, just, just kind of move and flow, just kind of go wherever it takes you. Your movements can be uh, airy, like the wind. Okay. Can be fiery, explosive. Boom. Can be like water, crashing like waves. Okay. Also, not to forget the ground, the earth, the center. So let's go down a little bit on one leg. Just a little bit of a stretch here. More for the hips. Shift to the other side. And another round this side as well. Yeah, let's come back up to standing and just, just kind of move wherever, wherever the energy takes you. You can do two steps again. You can do your Tai Sabaki. When you do your two steps, your, your body is moving as one unit. Okay. Move with the gaze. Look at the horizon, scan the horizon. Your body moves where you look. You're freeing that movement. You see everything, yet you're not focusing on any one thing. And you must, uh, many of you, have, I'm sure, have felt that during training, okay? That soft vision, that uh, swordsman's eyes, as they so often call it, okay? So now, um, what I'd like to do is. Just a little bit of ukemi. And if you have some uh, space, soft carpet, rug, I invite you to uh, join along with me. And we'll start just getting down, seated position. And let's just kind of rock back and forth. Just kind of feel that motion along your along your back. I find that this is a very good uh, practice, especially in the morning when your back feels kind of tight. It's good to, to roll. Oftentimes the, uh, the ground or, or, or mat or carpet, whatever it is, it feels like you're, uh, you're giving yourself a massage along your spine. And that's what it should feel like. At the same time, you're also strengthening your, your core muscles, your, your stomach and your abs, which is also very good. You know, uh, This will serve you well, especially when training resumes, when things open up again and we're able to start taking ukemi again. So I recommend doing just a little bit of ukemi on a day-to-day -day basis. And from here, we can take this into our backward roll. I like to do a backward roll very slowly. Just do it frame by frame. See that? And then the other side. And I do my rolls. I always protect uh, my head. Be mindful of the position of where your head is and what you're rolling over. You don't want to roll over your, along your spine and, and your neck and your head. Boom. So you roll over your shoulder. Lay your, your, your head 
never comes in contact with the ground. Very important safety practice. I'm gonna do a little, just a few forward rolls. Same thing here. I'm rolling over along the arm, the shoulder, from this shoulder across the back to this hip, the opposite hip. You don't wanna roll along your spine, that's dangerous. And again, I do this frame by frame. And again, this side. But for me, ukemi is about, um, it's about giving energy with the attack. And at the same time, it's also receiving the energy, okay? And when you receive energy in your body, you wanna let it pass through you. You don't wanna hold it in, okay? That's how you get injured, all right? Um, let's see. I invite Michael Sensei to come, just do a couple of forward rolls and backward rolls. I know he hasn't done this in a while. <laughs> just a few. Thank you. Okay. So for the next uh, part of my class, I'm just gonna do a little bit of, uh, with the uh, Boken. And you can pick up a, a Boken of your own or, or a staff too, that'll work as well. Um, just a quick note about the weapons. Uh, you know, in Aikido, we, we use, we, we train with weapons. Um, not, not so that we can, be good swordsmen, great swordsmen, the best swordsmen in the land, walking around in public with a, <laughs> with a sword <laughs> and taking out whatever, whoever uh, wants to mug us. Instead, the weapons are, are a tool by which we can um, develop focus and going to those very fine levels that uh, Nado Sensei often talks about, okay? And, uh, yeah, you can feel this whenever you pick up a weapon, whenever you pick up a sword or a staff, you know, what do you feel? What is, what is, what kind of energy are you getting when you pick up a weapon, you know? Um, and here, let me just, you pick up a live blade, especially if it's steel, you feel that sharpness or you see that sharpness, okay? It's steel, it's, it's kind of imposing looking and, you know. So just, just draw, your, draw your boken or your sword and just hold it right in front of you. What do, what do you feel, you know? And thank you. And O Sensei often uh, reserved weapons practice for the more advanced students because of that. It required maturity and a deep respect of the weapon itself. All right. Um, or in other words, um, when you pick up a weapon, are you in control of it or is it controlling you? You know? So just stand there and hold, hold the sword in front of you, the boken or, or staff, whichever you're, you're holding. And just kind of feel that, all right? Okay. So instead of getting in your shoulders and excited, you know, you have visions of lightsabers and Hollywood uh, movie duels, you know, instead we go the other way. We go to a place of calm, calm and sensor, okay? All right? So let's start with a, a few movements here. Let's start with uh, our feet together. And I'm gonna demonstrate it like this. It's just a warm up cup. We're just gonna raise the sword, like we're gonna put it into our spine, and then we're gonna cut down to about ankle height. Just like that. Just let the weight of the blade fall, and then you catch it right at the very, last moment before it hits the ground, you catch it. It's like something's falling, then you catch it. A little bit of a squeeze. Mm. 
Get your center involved. Move your center. Loosen up. So now let's, from, from there, let's take a step forward from feet together. Stand in Hanmi. Hold the sword in front of us. Tips about same level as your eyes. We're just going to raise the sword and you're going to cut Shomenuchi. Just do a few cuts. That same feeling of relaxed, raising, letting the weight, the weight of the blade fall, and then a little bit of a squeeze at the very end. It's very important that you allow that energy to pass through you. I was mentioning that in Bhakti Ukemi, but same thing here. Let the energy pass, that cut pass through you. You don't want to hold it in. Hold it out. Okay. So I find that uh, when I do my showman cuts, I usually start with a one, two count. And Jack Sensei, who follows me, uh, often has uh, been uh, lately been talking about a four count. But, you know, personally, I find myself doing, we're starting out with a, a, a two count. One with the raise, two with the cut. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. So Michael Sensei, I'd like to invite you just do a few, a few cuts. Very good, thank you. So we're talking about uh, uh, Tija Sensei mentioned dimensionality a little bit. Let's take this into another dimension now, okay? So we're going from one, two, one, two, one, two. Now we're gonna take it into a one count. We're just gonna raise one, 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 one. What we're doing is we're uniting the opposites there. You know, uh, Jack uh, O-Sensei has spoken of a sword that's so sharp that rather than, uh, that it, than cutting and separating whatever it cuts, it's so sharp that it unites. So we're, that's, what we're, that's what I imagine when I do this, okay? One cut, one, unite the opposites. Instead of one, two, it's one, one. One, one. When I'm cutting, or when we're cutting, we're moving through time and space, okay? From here to there, A to B, one, two. It takes time. And then also space, going from here to there, here to there. Time and space. Time and space. One cut, one cut, one cut. No time and space. So that's something that O-Sensei Ueshiba has said. No time and space for O-Sensei of uh, Aikido. And Michael Sensei, try that out just for a minute. Start with your one, two, one, two, one, two. Now unite it, unite time and space. One, two. one, 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 one. Okay, thank you. All right, for the next uh, part, we'll switch to uh, Joe proper. 
Actually, this is a, a nuboko, which is a, a Japanese uh, short spear. And I'll hold the spear tip close to you so you can see. Okay. And uh, this is a short spear, unlike the uh, yari, which is a six foot long spear that was used uh, on the battlefield. Okay. But this is the short spear, about length of a jo. And the real nuboko has a uh, six inch triple sided uh, razor sharp blade at the end. Okay. So you have this sharp sharpness, this polarity, the sharpness of the tip, also the blunt end of the other, uh, the other end of the jaw or spear rather, okay? So rather than um, trying to teach you a, a kata, you know, and Jack Sensei does have a 30 movement kata of the nuboko. If you're interested in learning it, we do teach it at our school. Um, what I thought we'd do is we just kind of, uh, Start with some uh, basic movements, and then we'll take it into a uh, something more free form. Okay, I know most of you have been training for many many years and, and have studied different types of kata and kumitachi, kumijo uh, pattern practices. What what I'd like to do is is help you step through that gateway into that place where you're more free, more uh, open to these uh, these energies, the flow kind of thing, all right? So let's just start out with the staff in the right hand. And you can use a staff too. You don't have to have one of these. Many of you <laughs> probably don't have spears. So just start with your right hand, the spear in your right hand. You're just gonna bring it to your center, okay? Then from here, we're just gonna spiral clockwise as we ascend and then counterclockwise down. And then we're just gonna raise heaven and earth, all right? Let's try that again. Start with your center, spiraling up, spiraling down, raising heaven and then earth. We're reuniting heaven and earth. Okay, the spiral, these are the heaven and earth, fire and water, the elements. And uniting heaven and earth. Okay, that's your center. All right, let's do it one more time. Center, spiral up, spiral down, heaven and earth unite. And from there, let's take that step forward. Step forward with the left foot. Now you're in the basic stance of the uh, the Joe or the spear. Okay, let's do it one more time. From here, let's do. Let's just do a few, um, few ski, thrust. Okay. So let's thrust about heart level, and then back. The rear hand is always anchored to your hip. Okay. You never want to hold it in front of you like this, where somebody can, can jam you and, and hit you in the groin. So here, extend. And that's how you how you thrust with a with a spear or with a choke. You're stepping forward and you're extending. About heart level. This is much like the uh, the rowing exercise that we do. And the power of the the thrust doesn't come from your your arms. It comes from the movement of your center and that extension. There are thrusts where they. We like to telescope the spear or the staff like that. But for now, it's just an extension. And this is like a spiral, okay? Out. So just practice a few of these step thrust, thrusting moves. Okay. Next one we're gonna do is uh, a little bit of movement that will encourage you to be more free form in your uh, staff work or your Joe work. Okay, so let's start with both hands on the staff like this. Let's just do some figure eights. You can stand like this square. I like to stand in Hanmi actually, see that? And when you do your figure eights, always loop the Joe to the side of your body, see that? 
the side of the body. And this, is a, this can be either a striking move or a blocking move, you can block. Okay. But again, move your center, you can change your hanmi. Loosen up your body, let it flow. It's all about flow. Try one arm, figure eight. Looping to the side of your body, rather than in front of you. Can be, can be a striking motion, striking motion, or, or a block, or a block. Try the other hand, other on me. And just loosen up, feel your, your core, your sensor moving with that figure eight. And then bring it back to two hands again. Figure eight or infinity uh, loop. This is also uh, present in all of our Aikido techniques as well. This movement, this is like, like Kodagaishi, Kodagaish. Okay. And then the next one is the uh, hand transition. Okay, so you're just gonna hold the staff in your right hand. You're gonna turn the tip down. You're gonna take left hand thumb down, take it from the top and you're just gonna pass it to the other side like that. See that, same thing. Tip down, you're just gonna take staff, your free hand thumb down, and you're just gonna pass it. You're just gonna pass it back and forth like that. And again, you can use your, use your body as well to move. Then there's a second uh, transition that we do, which is a little more difficult. Start in your basic stance. And then you're gonna raise the staff above your head. You're gonna turn, I'm gonna get down in the Seiza Shiko position to, so it's easier, so you can see this easier. You're just gonna turn the staff one full turn. See that, see the tip in front of me? One full turn, taking behind it and I'm changing. This is called the helicopter movement. See that? All right, so those are the three flowing movements, the figure eight, the vertical transition left to right, then also the horizontal one, the one above the head, like a helicopter. I know that's difficult for you to see. <laughs> I'll get down here again so you can see it, see? Sorry. You have to make do with uh, what we have here. Okay, so now got a couple of minutes left. So let's let's take this into our um, let's use that. Let's use the uh, the three flowing movements, the two transitions, also a little bit of the uh, the basic thrust. Let's take into into a place where you can improvise a little bit with the staff. So let's start feet together. Come to your center, spiral up, spiral down. Heaven and earth unite. Take a step forward and then thrust. And then from here, just start to move. Try it again. Clear your mind, breathe, center. Come to your center. Unite the energies, heaven, earth, fire, water. Take that step and then strike into the void and then move. So um, we were talking about that 
two count or uh, the one two count with the sword and then the one count. And then I like to think of this as going from zero to one, that singular act of creation, zero to one, where you clear your mind out of nothingness and comes the movement, you just, just move. Improvise. Okay. So go ahead, uh, Mike Sensei, just do uh, a little bit of movement. You can use yours or mine, go right ahead. Just let it flow, move with that energy. Be aware of your surroundings. There's the fire, the water, the earth, the air, the elements. Comes out of nothingness. Okay, thank you. How are we doing with time here? Okay. Let me, uh... Two minutes, Harry. <laughs> How many? Two, minutes. Two more minutes? Oh, okay. Minutes. Hi. Okay. Yeah. So going from zero to one. You know, I have no idea what I'm doing. Just clearing the mind. And then just move. This is something that you can incorporate into your daily practice. Just kind of go with that, that flow, okay? Um, if you're lucky enough to live in nature, you live near a forest or, or a lake, you know, you can go out and, and practice uh, among the trees in nature. Oftentimes, uh, well, I've, I've read that O-sensei would go up into the mountains and he would uh, train and practice uh, by himself up in the mountains with a boken or, or a, or a uh, spear or staff. And often, well, not really by himself, uh, not really alone. He claims that he was training with the Tengu, the mythical Tengu who, uh, of Japanese mythology who would teach him the secrets of uh, martial arts, okay? So hopefully that you guys uh, can go out in nature and, and uh, by yourself meet some Tengu train with them and uh, learn the secrets of martial arts. Okay, so in closing, uh, yeah, we're about that, that time, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd like to thank you all for, for joining me this uh, Saturday afternoon. It's a tremendous honor to be uh, here teaching uh, this, uh, my very first Osensei Revisited uh, seminar. I hope uh, that there will be more and that uh, I'll be able to uh, train with all of you in person you know, and, and I think that that day will come soon enough. Uh, you know, I'm, there's a lot of optimism in the air with the vaccines, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting distributed and, and uh, things start to open up again. And, and hopefully I'll be able to see you all and, and train with you. And, and uh, we, we can all give each other a big sweaty after training hug like uh, we used to do. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll bow out. Hi, domo arigato gozaimashita. Thank you very thank much. You so much really Harry, thank, thank you so much, Harry. Thank you, Harry Concepcion Sensei. Thank, thank you so much. Hi. And uh, we'll begin a five-minute break uh, to be followed by Jack Wada Sensei. So we're on a five-minute break. I'll ring the bell at four minutes. I would, Harry, I would just venture to say, probably for more than myself, love your love for the art. Love the way it comes through. And your exhortation there at the end, I thought was beautiful. Thank you. Ah, thank you so much, Sensei.
Thank you so much, Sensei. Thank you, Harry. Hi, thank you, Sensei, Lauren. And we're returning to the workshop. Uh, we have, uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Jack Wada. Many of you know Jack. Uh, he's a seventh Don and chief instructor at Aikido of San Jose. He's a good friend of mine and uh, been my senpai for many years. And uh, we share a love of uh, superheroes and basketball among other things. Uh, Jack 
Uh, it appears that you're muted. Your microphone is muted. Unmuted. And thank you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jack Wada Sensei. Okay, um, I originally was going to wear a gi. I did, but for whatever reason, my hakama, the hakama that I have, the strings kind of always get untied and droop. So I just decided what I would do is uh, we have a T-shirt I got from Linda Holiday Sensei when I go taught at one of her summer things, and this is O Sensei. So I thought I would wear this shirt, and so. Um, just going to do a simple bow. And uh, Harry Sensei did such a clear job kind of going through some of the changes, okay? Yeah. And some of the things. And um, one of the things that, that I thought was kind of interesting was he was really talking about one or two. But what I'm wearing, uh, using right here is a very short staff. It's probably in a scream of stick. But according to the Do sense, that was since I kind of had this sort of a short stick, you know, which was kind of like a prayer stick, or you could use it simulating a sword or a staff. So I use this a lot inside because I don't have to worry so much about knocking things down. So um, I thought one thing was interesting that Harry Sensei said that from nothing, from zero to one. That sort of transition, zero to one. Boom. One may represent the center, okay? But in the beginning, the zero might have represented some sort of an original, according to those things here, that's separated into two. <sighs> center, circle. Conversely, you go the other way. There's a circle. There must be a center. So there's an original unity. And then you take a step out from that and you center circle or circle center. Okay. Um, and what I thought we would do is go through center. Uh, kind of an up down feeling. Uh, there's never just a center, there's always a circle with it. Okay. But one of the things that those sensei was talking about last night was one thing it starts with fullness. Okay. So, for example, if I'm doing the center, fullness, up, down, down, up, especially ground under. Okay. And just for reference, okay, I start with a circle. <laughs> what does the circle do? The circle, the circle. So for me, instead of going fullness, although I work that too, I do work the center, okay? But if I work the circle, what I start with is freedom. Ooh. And not just freedom, but a feeling of liberation. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Now Harry Sensei kind of showed you the changes here, figure A, okay? So what I'm doing a little bit right here, there's always a center, there must be a circle with it. You can make the center the obvious, the circle is the less obvious. Conversely, go the other way. The circle is the obvious. Boom, 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 boom. There must be a center. Now for both the center-based, there's a character. With the circle-based, there's a character. Okay, they're a little different. Um, what I'm doing right here is I'm playing more of the circle based right here. Um, okay. Um, 
And um, I have a sort of spear shaped thing, but uh, uh, for whatever reason, I just decided that this would be one less threatening <clears throat> in your face with something sharp, okay? And what I tend to do, even though this is short, it could also be a longer staff. Uh, I use it like there's a spear point here. And when I'm holding it, the long end is the spear point. So if I go through changes like this, the long end is the spear, okay? Now what I'm doing right there is just these changes here, boom, these changes here, boom, or these changes here, and combining them you know, with a thrust or a cutting motion. Boom, okay. Now what I like about the spear is it's not a strike, it's a piercing motion, All right? A little more serious. And not just a strike, but the sharp edges, boom, it's a cutting motion. And what I'm really trying to do, I'm not really interested in piercing anybody or cutting anybody, but boom, it changes. So when I pick this up, the character that's created, when I, when I kind of go with the intention of a spear motion, creates different character here, whether it's a circle, based character or a center based character. Okay. Now being of the circle base primarily for me, I like freedom or liberation. In other words, we have forms. I even uh, we teach a 30 movement form. But more than anything else, ooh, like the free freedom of the motion. So what I'm doing right here is combining, this can be a striking form, striking form. We also have this as an up down. Okay, now I'm going through what I call, I call these changes center circle water fire. You see how sensei you want. But a, a lot of the kata that come out of, you know, Aikido uh, don't to me resemble those sensei. So I kind of like these changes, which if you watch him on video, well, he does these changes. Okay. So for me, I'm just in the circle by itself, it's somewhat chaotic. So the circle represents situational energies. So it's gonna be easy here, easy here. There has to be some balance of a character center so that out there, it's not too chaotic. If it's chaotic, then, either goes ah like that, or the character here, because it's so chaotic, kind of stagnates. We get a lot of that, I think, that polarity in, during the isolation and pandemic times. But boom. Okay. So what Harry Sensei said from zero to one, creation. But you can also look at it that one has to have a yin, yang, yang, yin sense. So from whatever it was, zero, emptiness, non-being, okay? The beginning, boom. That one had to have a, a type of polarity, okay? Maybe that polarity was center, there must be a circle. Maybe that polarity can be looked at, there's a circle, therefore there must be a center. If you like this other style, you could, you could give the center quality of fire, the circle water. Fire, mind, 
circle, body. So there's a lot that you can kind of do. And uh, interest to me is uh, what we might call just the Osensei's cosmology. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, if, uh, if you have a weapon, pick it up. Just off of what, you know, and if you're not familiar with this, uh, you got a pretty good prep from Harry Sensei. Uh, just start to move, start to move. This is what I call the fire water changes, thumb down, thumb up. If you go on top, it's thumb forward. Mm -hmm. And you may have a basic thrust form. You may have a striking form, a striking form, a thrust form. You may have an up and a down. But I also found, what I, I learned in Shingu from Hikizuchi Sensei was we went left this way. Most of everybody up north goes right with that motion. I don't think it necessarily matters, but I kind of like the, the leftward motion. All right? You just let the staff kind of move. For me, what the staff does, staff represents the situational energies. Yeah. Those energies, the circle, to some to recreate the center character. Boom. Boom, boom. And here I am right here trying to figure out and do things. As I, in the center, start to be clearer, so they can create a better character. Boom, 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 boom. Um, and again, if you want to just turn your staff, if you have an umbrella, you can do this with an umbrella. You can do this with a walking stick. Okay. Um, I think whatever O Sensei picked up, you know, all of a sudden it could be a, a cutting sword or it could be a spear. Um, um, as I'm standing here, as the character, the energies of the situation circle, boom, they, they, they communicate with me in bits, rhythms, boom, shapes, circle, spiral, wave, Oh, laser beam of light. Yeah, I mean, trying to figure it out, do it. It's got to be very easy and kind of clear. Clear. I can stand in as the center character of those realm forces. Things will loosen up. Boom. Boom. Okay. For those of you, for example, you don't have anything, one thing you can do is just generate a field, an energy flow between your right and your left. Okay, now the right is leading. Now by stopping, going to the left, but see by, by rotating, the left can move. The right can move. And you can, you know, change polarity up, down, down, up. And you can get a lot of what we're doing here without the staff. Now, this is interesting right here, where, for example, here it's creating a corridor and I'm able to turn around. Okay, so what I'm just doing, you know, just uh, the energies of the circle. Oh, my God. So right is leading all of a sudden, the left leads. Now all of a sudden, instead of right, left, it's an up and a down. All of a sudden, there's a reversal here. 
And that's really what we do. Now you may get this and try to figure it out and all of a sudden you're losing the feeling of the energies moving. Boom, boom, boom. 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 When I was first learning, you know, the beginnings of some of these movements from Hikizuchi Sensei, there would be a set pattern for what he called the first Ikkyo. He called it Ikkyo, and he called it Ikkyo for Bojutsu. It was not Jo, it was a longer step. But he had quite a background in Jupin, which is bayonet. So he had a sense of something, it wasn't just a stick. Okay? And then he would teach uh, a Nikyo form and a Sankyo form. And he, when, he, when he got past Nikyo, you know, he would do this. And then all of a sudden, you'd look around, he'd be doing this. And he would do something like this. And it's almost like he would confound people because there's Nikyo. Everybody expected a, a linear sequence. And you know, he would, every time he did it, he would seemingly did it differently. And so what you did is you kind of had to be very easy. You picked up patterns within it. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, boom. Now, zero. Stillness, calm. Emptiness, not vacancy. Oh, oh. Well, that goes back to the emptiness. You might feel it is calm. Stillness. Silence. It'll just be a, that motion, or it can go into larger, larger. Okay. So you can call this kind of what we call more improv, improvisation. Uh, for me, it's, uh, I, it's my version. Not at all sensei's level by any stretch of the imagination, but what he might call taki. Musu. Okay, so let's say there's a beginning. You know, one, zero to one. Very interesting. They maybe things started with zero. Whatever was there, or one, whatever was there had to kind of boom, empty, clear itself. And then that one had to kind of go into a yin yang, a light dark, not gender, but a masculine feminine, a fire water, a center circle. And off of that one, too. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. So, all I'm asking you to do is just sort of explore. Okay? couple of my favorite Bruce Lee quotes. I'm not a great believer in systems or a method. And without a system or a method, what is there to teach? I can only teach you to explore yourself. Now, there are tools, there are changes. But can I start to settle? <sighs> so if I don't do that, in other words, you know, that, that sense of the zero, uh, the forces of the circle can be very chaotic. So at some point, 
I'm kind of easy here. The circle, there must be, by that law of creation, nothing going into the one, but the one has a polarity. Has a unity with itself, even though it's a light, dark, or water, fire, or center circle. You can pick yours. In off of that, oh. so whatever was there, non being, whatever it is, had to kind of settle zero itself to recalibrate itself. Oh. Zero to one, but that one had a polarity. And that polarity, the light, the dark, the water, fire, there was a type of a unity between that. One. Boom. Now in our world, one turns into I, I. But standing kind of as that original zero, clear, empty, stillness. And zero going into that one, but that one having a type of a polarity, water, enhances fire, fire enhances water, heaven, earth, earth, heaven. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom. And for me, that is, uh, I, I call that process uh, my own version of the talking Musi principle. <sighs> now, a couple of things. We have a couple of moments. Um, that may be a bit much, but one thing you can do. For example, uh, well, this is a one, two. Okay. Now, my count's a little different. Okay, now I go one, but one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I use a four count. Why? Well, since it's cosmology, each day the one soul, primary, first consciousness, the shikon, the four souls out of the one. Some, again, three origins. Okay? Manifest, hidden, divine. Transformation, dimensionality. Then the eight powers. So for me, I view there's a primal, there's a unity, there's a one. I prefer the word as opposed to one. I prefer it, there's a unity. Boom. Now, that unity is a very alive, so it has aspects or qualities. Heaven, earth, water, fire. Um, for me, they translate into things like intelligence, power, beauty, love. Beginning that unity, there was that polarity within the one. There's an original binding force, which I call love, and Takemusu. O sensei sort of defines as the Budo, Bu, Take, Bu, that comes out of that unity. Boom, 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 boom. And then that polarity, all right, it's very difficult to describe. So the one for me goes into a four. So if you take any movement, one, two, one, two, you can also one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now Tisha, since they made a very good thing because you, you can go this way, this is the Tai Chi principle. Right? But when you go that way, for me, I'm not muscling up. 
when I take the one, two, and I try to add muscle to it or technique to it, okay, uh, that's different than the boom, or boom, boom, boom. So one thing you might play with if this stuff is a little more complex than you can handle is just take a basic movement, one, one, two. One is set, settle, ground, two. You have the motion, but one, two, three, four. See, if when I do that, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But since they said certain things, they said, move like a beam of light. Okay, so if I just one, two, and I get better within the one, two paradigm, but one, two, three, four. I mean, that's a beam of light moving. Boom, it can move. I'm traveling. That beam is still going. Oh, Sensei also said, fly like lightning. Boom, boom. Go one, two. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So for me, one, two, three, four. I'm flying like lightning. And then strike like thunder. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the tricky element is it looks like I'm putting more power into it, but boom. It's those energies out there. They do the work. But I have to be a character here. I have to have my own balance. And boom. And so the one, two, three, four for me, you have your center-based character. There must be a circle. You have your circle-based character. There must be a center. Okay? Now I'm going one, two, three, four. I'm kind of combining those two. You need both. Okay? Boom. 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 And the trick right there, see I'm putting a lot of body force into that. There's focus, there's a lightness, but there's not a lot of heavy in that motion. And it all goes back to that stillness. You can call it calm, silence. Not vacancy, but emptiness. One thing our sensei said, if you don't understand what he calls shinku, true emptiness, you can't get Aikido. Original consciousness, best I can do it. But because of that emptiness, the forces boom, of the circle, they move freely. And the circle itself, there's enough clarity in this system, I don't interfere with it. Oh. So uh, I do a lot of work that way. Because for me, I mean, you know, I, <laughs> hey, you know, you, you, you teach Aikido every day. That's great. I love it. I miss it. But all of a sudden, that's taken away. But the Do Sensei calls it downtime. Ugh. Okay, what can you do in the downtime? Downtime. Go a bit deeper with your process. Downtime. <sighs> I to touch that clear. Get that feeling of the calm. And that word empty can scare you. But on the other hand, empty. Boom. That was alive with itself, empty. Empty as possibility. Then, boom. The energies of the circle. Boom, 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 boom. Or at any moment, boom, 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 they create through you. You're participating in that by being a character on the lineage of whatever circle you're here. So we're kind of on with well, Sensei's lineage, but you know, um, just playing 
the trumpet this morning because last night I had a dream of a different way of phrasing. Okay. The circle talking. And yeah, it was fun. I was like, oh my God, okay. Wow, wow, wow. I can phrase this way, wow. Okay. So a process that'll help you. I pick this up. This is uh, all of a sudden the circle becomes more around oh, sensation that inch, martial art. I pick uh, a horn up, it's a different lineage. Uh, give me a basketball, boom, boom, boom. different lineage. <laughs> Still gonna be a circle with energies appropriate for that lineage, creating, because I'm a circle based, a character through which those energies, those energies can show. Anyway, I think we are probably about where we should be. So I'm gonna throw it back to Lauren Sensei. Well, thank and you, Jack. Thank, thank you, you so you much, Jack. And okay. would you like to bow out from your class or? Yeah, I'll, I'll bow class? out. Okay, we have a showman here. So, uh, and because um, we're working the one, two, three, four count, I'm gonna do the, the two bows and the four claps, okay? Uh, well, since they got that from Momoto Kyo, so it's not strict Shingu. He got that from Deguchi Sensei. A lot of times people do the one, two, which is fine, but that's Shinto. And I think Go Sensei did the one, two, three, four, not so much Omoto because it was a Shinto offshoot, but because of his tie to Deguchi Sensei, who taught him a lot about how the universe was. So I'm going to end with the, the four claps after two bows. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you very much, Jack Wada Sensei. Thank you, Sensei. And uh, thank you for all the instructors. I'd like to ask uh, Harry Concepcion and Teja Bell to turn on their cameras and uh, we'll uh, open the mic for questions. Uh, uh, who would ever like to uh, ask a question or talk to one of the senseis or make a comment, just uh, jump right in. Just a, a note of thanks, Jack. It's been a lot of years. It's great to watch you and hear you. Thank you for what you shared. You're welcome. Leaders of cake. You know, what's funny about this is a lot of stuff words can't describe. But on the other hand, you know, the way Don Juan put it in the Costaneda books, it takes a certain amount of personal power to be able to articulate an experience. So I kind of know that, you know, it's like, oh my God, I have nothing to say. But there is also a practice. Hikizuchi Sensei would do this. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, after a morning prayer, he would look at me and said, okay, such and such, you name an obscure kami, flash through the dojo during the prayer. What color was it? And I would say, purple! <laughs> but I didn't know what else to say. And he'd go, <clears throat> and he'd walk away. And the worst thing I could have done was go, da, 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 da. So if you have anything to say, it actually is important. It gets the process going. I mean, I, I've spent a lot of time being afraid to say anything, but I think what we're trying to do here, as opposed to a more Japanese tradition, which is keep your mouth shut and sit seiza, is, is more to allow a communication. I thought what Tijia Sensei did was beautiful. I loved Harry Sensei's clarity and his ability to present mm. himself. That was beautiful to watch. So is there anybody else? I don't want to just be the only person talking. So. I don't know who else wants to talk. 
Yeah, that's tricky, isn't it? <laughs> when I taught high school in Japan, I taught when, no, not exactly when Jack and I were, maybe when Jack and I were both in Shingu, I got a gig teaching English in a local high school. I had to take the train 30 minutes away. And the uh, uh, students would never ask questions. Yeah. And, uh, you have to call on somebody. And, and I was, I, I asked the, 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 the teacher why he said, well, either they stand up and ask a question and it's a stupid question and they look foolish and nobody likes to look foolish in front of others, or it's a really smart question and they don't want to let anybody else know their secret. So that was oh. Japanese high school students. How about uh, this community? Who wants to say something? Uh, this is, have, I, go ahead. who is it? Sassoon Turikian. Very good, Sassoon. And I don't mind looking foolish at all. Uh, I appreciate, thank you for the senses who thought. I appreciated the, it very much. And I noticed how everyone discussed their experiences with the art. And what, and it comes across that what's important isn't what you're doing, but, and even, uh, what you want to work towards, but what your experience of what you're doing is. And can you take a moment to talk about how you learned or some of your experiences, call it the internal aspect, and how the students might endeavor to find what their internal experience needs to be. And uh, Teja, you want to start? Sure, thank you. Beautiful, uh, beautiful inquiry there. So I, for me, it's, it is a fine line because it's not just about subjective experience, about how I'm experiencing. There is a balance. And um, uh, both Harry and Jack, I thought, expressed that beautifully in their own ways. And um, uh, so it's not just about internalizing and then speaking from the internal. We have in any art that we do, and as we're talking about Aikido here in this way, it is a balance between the recognition of how it manifests and what our experience is. So there's, you know, um, I don't always talk about my experience, but also the structures and the development that takes place in that process. And I guess in that way, I'm talking about my experience in development. Um, does that make some sense to you? And uh, Harry, would you like to comment? Um, yeah, my own experience is that it's, it's definitely about, um, about that, 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 uh, that center, you know, in, in, in these, Whatever, whatever you're going through, whatever your trials and tribulations of your, your life, um, Aikido's sort of, oh, Sensei's message gives you that, that center, that, uh, that ability to move forward with that positivity, that positive key energy, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, these are very tough times that we're living in. And, uh, you know, I've met a few people that, that have expressed uh, that they're uh, losing hope you know, that kind of thing. And, and I said, well, what do you do? You know, you, you, you get up, you, you do what it takes. You get up in the morning, you do what it takes, you do what has to be done. You move forward, you start with what's possible. You work yourself towards the impossible, you know. Um, Aikido represents an ideal, uh, uh, a, a, the world how it ought to be. I think, I think that's the, the vision that Osensei really uh, had, uh, you know, this is how it should be, the world of harmony, the world of peace, like that. And, um, you know, although it's, it's uh, a, a vision of, of, of perfection, you know, uh, um, you know, we, we, we move towards that. We, we choose to go forward and move towards that state of, of, of perfection. You know, even though perfection may not exist in that literal sense, we choose to be in the service of it. We choose to move to forward towards it. I, Thank you, Harry. Hi, uh, Sassoon, do we? Do, 
one another one another blast. Jack, would you like to comment? Oh, well, yeah, the, both the Harry and uh, Dijon since said it so well. Um, I think, you know, um, the whole, I think it was originally, you translated for the Do Sensei, the term Tan Ren. <laughs> and so yes. he and I went on the phone over that for two hours, believe me. But Tan Ren is different than just training. The Tan, you know, is, is toughening, strengthening. And the Ren is refinement. And uh, a lot of what we're talking about is encompassed in another Japanese word, although they, these are cross-cultural terms, shugyo. In other words, uh, the tan for me, the, the toughening is not about making yourself more immune to, to, to more abuse. It, it really is about the, the interior development to be able to hang in there doing what the downtime is. And in the process of that, we're, we're progressing towards our own mission, our own purpose in our life. And so there is a developmental thing. So they work together, the actual sense of not toughening in terms of making yourself physically stronger, but, but really uh, allowing yourself to open in times that are hard. And do, because of that, we progress along, whether we know it or not, we've chosen our path. And we progress along that journey. So there is refinement. Uh, and it's uh, oftentimes, yeah, you run into obstacles. You run into walls. I thought what Nado Sensei said last night was actually pretty important. You know, you're meditating. You, you, there's a big rock or boulder or wall. You don't break the wall or shove the boulder aside. You settle and you walk through it because it's a dimensional gateway. I thought that was pretty profound. And, and, and so a lot of what we're trying to do is, is realize that, for example, the downtime from the pandemic is a gateway. It's a developmental opportunity, although we may not always be able to see it that way on, on a bad day. But to be able to do what O-sensei did in Iwama during World War II, where he was living in a hut with a mud floor, farming, and had very few students, and um, he grew. He transformed. And so if we can kind of use that as a model, it's a lot of what Harry Sensei was talking about, you know? And uh, I, uh, that was a... If that was take anything away from the Do Sensei's class last night, I thought, yeah, right on. You don't, you're not supposed to shove the boulder or break the wall down, but everything like that is a gateway and you walk through it. And so I guess that's what we're after, is being able to kind of see all this that's going on in the world, put it into a, a, a human perspective and sort of transform through that because there are certainly other states of being uh, that also retain the compassion of being human. At the same time, we're elevated out of the pettiness of our I world that's very selfish and judgmental. And so that for me is, uh, is something that's very important. That's kind of what keeps me going on the path more than anything else. So I mean, that's all I have to say, so. Thank you very much, uh, Jack, and thank you, Sassoon. And do we have, I think we have time for one more question if anybody would like to uh, jump in. Mike from New Zealand. Hello, Mike. Well, I'd just like to thank the senseis very much. In these um, difficult times, there's less opportunity to see and work with other teachers. And so to get the exposure that these that this opportunity provides is pretty special. Um, just thank you very much to all three of them. It's it's great to experience what other people are doing with this amazing art. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. And uh, anybody else have any uh, final questions or comments before we call an end to the this uh, day of classes. I have, take, I have to take a minute 
and say to you, Lauren, and on behalf of everyone and, and let everyone know, uh, just thank you for all the energies you've put out to make this happen. Everyone should know that uh, I'm just riding along on Ken's and, and Lauren's coattails and really Lauren has done all the work to make this happen. So thank you very, very much. Well, thank you, Richard, for the kind words and to Ken Cron and uh, who uh, 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 suffered technical problems earlier today, but managed to recover as he uh, is clever to do. And to everybody, uh, to uh, Teja Bell Sensei, to Harry Concepcion Sensei, and to Jack Wada Sensei, and to all of you who have come in today uh, to participate and to add your participation as an energy to this community. Thank you all very much. We will reconvene next week, same time, same channel. Thank you all very much and good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Good night, everyone. Thank you.